Alrighty then, uh, what's going on everybody? SDG, or nope, not SDG Weekly. Awesome Game Replays, uh, episode 39. Yeah, and, uh, getting at, uh, one of these non shmup games, if you will, again, once again, on, uh, Awesome Game Replays, the side show here to SDG Weekly. Um, gonna be, uh, co-hosted with the expert of this episode, uh, GG Maximo. Um, bringing us Assault Suits Vulcan on uh, the Super Nintendo. Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> yeah, also known as uh, Cybernator, um, US version, but yeah, it is in the Assault Suits series with like Lanos, Lanos 2, and um, yeah, also known as Target Earth and whatnot, so. Um, <laughs> what else? What else uh, bring, what, what's the other main reason, I guess, or big main reason to bring us uh, Assault Suits Vulcan today? Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I mean, a lot of people probably might know this if you know like hobbies and my interests, but like, I tend to get branded as like that one guy who really, really, really loves mecha related properties because I'm always showing people on like Gundam shows, etc. And back when I was in high school or whatever, I was kind of just dabbling like Super Nintendo emulators, mostly RPGs, but also um, some action games here and there. I remember playing this a little bit. Didn't think too much of it at the time. But then um, later on, I played a strategy RPG called Front Mission, which I got pretty into for like about a year and a half. Um, then some years later, I remember reading it about like the personnel that were involved in that game and one of the games that apparently the main director um I believe his name is Toshihiro um, Tetsuchida worked on was Assault Suits Vulcan and I was like that's very interesting because a lot of there's a lot of similar story beats um the way world building is created in this game um kind of the atmospheric I guess aspects that makes you feel like you are like the pilot in that like mecha cockpit or whatever yeah um, like these games are definitely very much like anime inspired to say the least so yeah and even in the interviews like one of the guys other guys that worked on this game talked about how they were inspired by like other mecha anime such as um photoms with which is also kind of similar in a way to the kind of world building there where it's like you got these two huge main factions beefing each other out just throwing these guys in like these basically like mobile tanks and just like all right just fulfill your objective go kill these guys and even with just the straightforward orders you still have the pods trying to kind of question you know, like what's the point of all this and i think from what i remember um Playing a little bit of Lineos, it's kind of like this, but then I feel like it's even more accentuated in this game where it's like the way the movement feels, it's like you're not too light. You're also not like stupidly heavy like a lot of other like mecha action games that came before this point. So it feels kind of just right where you have like that nice blend of just like heaviness to like the movement, but then it's still like fast paced enough action wise that's like. I don't know, I guess it's just pretty enjoyable, simply to put it. So, like, some of the other Lanos games have, like, the system where you're doing good in a level based off the points, and then you can, like, earn better weapons. Uh, do we have a system like that in this game, or how, how does the weapon so, work? So, yeah, in this game, they actually simplified some of those aspects. Um, mostly, you have your... Um, you start off with like a Vulcan and a punch and then over the course of the game you pick up additional item grades that are from like these item boxes you can get missiles um you can get a laser weapon um and you can also get a napalm weapon if you fulfill certain conditions and in order to power up these weapons instead of a shop what happens is around these stages there are additional item boxes and what you do with those additional item boxes is you uncover them, you go to the weapon you want to, you pick up the P item, and that way you um, basically, when you get enough of these power chips, the weapon is leveled up to level two. And then the same thing happens again when you collect enough power chips to move from level two to level three, where the weapon is 
maxed out in terms of firepower. Okay, so like you're powering them up individually uh, and actively in the stages, I guess it looks like. That's correct. Yeah, there's no like in between stages menus or anything like that. Because I think from a pacing perspective, it's just you're going from one level to the next. And really, the only thing breaking up is basically the um, pre stage like text drop where it just kind of tells you like everything that's being set up for the stage. Okay, nice. Um, since this is a bit of a long replay, it's about like an hour or so, did you want to get into it? Or? Yeah, let's, uh, let's definitely, uh, kick it off here. Okay. But, uh, yeah, de definitely good stuff. Uh, yeah, the series is pretty sweet, and, uh, yeah, they're all pretty great games, but I'm curious to see, uh, yeah, how this one's gonna pan out. Because, uh, yeah, I do really like these games, I just, I personally have not played this one yet myself, so I'm definitely mm -hmm. curious. But yeah, let's, uh, check it out. Okay, so just to give everyone a little clarification, um, this was played on the recent M2 developed Assault Suits Falcon Declassified port, which was released, um, I believe it was March 30th, or at least late March for the Nintendo Switch. Um, basically what this port is, it has all the bells and whistles of the original Super Famicom port, complete with a slightly redone translation, attack text character portraits, because that was something that was taken out of the US Cybernator release back in the day, along with a couple of minor sensors for certain graphical scenes. Um, it has a couple of soundtracks, which includes the Super Famicom original, as well as the original soundtrack, Masters. Um, it also features an interview with one of the game's character um, mech designers and also features translations of the game's manual some cool images both of just character art and concept art as well as 80 page guidebook which gives you a lot of details in the game but so other than that so that guidebook like you're talking about the new edition so that's like a limited edition guidebook no no like or... it's a so from what i understand it was a separate like guidebook issue like paper cover like back in the day but it's digitally included with the port oh okay nice nice very yeah, very cool then mm -hmm. okay yeah so the the port yeah of course that's definitely the good thing worth mentioning yeah from m2 that just came out so yeah this is in fact gameplay from that so pretty sweet yep. um yeah let's get let's get started then shall we yep let's go all right three <laughs> two one yeah, so basically right here, I just start the game. There's no difficulty options in this game, but um, just no difficulty. the text scrolls a little bit fast, but basically this first mission here, you're just invading the space colony here to take care of like this energy plant, which the European Asian Federation is using to try to power its weapons. Um, you are a soldier for the um, Pacific Union, which his name is Jake Brain. He's Canadian, 25, bit of a hothead. Um, really, this whole conflict kind of resides on the quote unquote Fourth World War, which is a fight between the Pacific Union, which is basically the US, South America, um, Australia versus the European Asian Federation, which is basically Europe, um, Russia, and China. Sure, um, sure. In this first mission here, um, you might be noticing I pretty much avoid firing on those enemies. If you want a normal play for you, you can just um, use your Vulcan to pretty much destroy them, pick up power chips along the way. But the reason why I decided to skip those and instead only focus on this main energy unit right here was in the next stage, if we do certain, fulfill certain conditions, we can unlock an additional weapon. So did you do one of the conditions then already? Or? Yeah, correct. Okay. So basically, you don't want to shoot at anything on that first stage, oh, okay. except for just the main boss unit boss unit because then when you come out on the next stage um you might see in a second here but i unlocked the napalm weapon 
Now, um, you can actually upgrade this further. The way you do that is um, basically not destroying anything on stage two, except for just the main boss unit. And then when you get to stage three, that will let you, you would see like a little number or whatever next to Napalm, and that will let you click power chips and then power up to level two and level three Napalm. But since I was losing quite a few runs, just trying to even get the unlock condition to happen, and level one Napalm itself is already plenty powerful, I just stuck with that for the majority of this playthrough. Um, yeah, so this stage here is a um, kind of like mining facility, and really we just kind of take our time with this kind of free roaming movement that we can do just to power up our weapons and to basically take care of the little asteroid turrets that are kind of littered all around the place. Um, instead of using Napalm, you could just use Vulcan if you really wanted to here. Pretty much just has the same effect. It just takes less time to destroy these um, little turret areas. So, so you have no ammo for your weapons in this? It's just the rechargeable bar? Yes, yeah, so the rechargeable bar is basically how much ammo you have available when that um, goes is completely depleted, then you can't fire until it recharges. Um, periodically in some areas or in some item boxes, you'll see these little energy chips, which are denotative H, that restores a portion of your big health meter in the middle. Um, of course, if that goes to zero, you basically have to, it's considered a game over and you have to continue. So it's basically a one life game. Right, right. Um, I go up here because in one of those asteroids over there, there's another power chip, and it's very easy to miss if you're trying to destroy those from the bottom. Pick up a W there, and then that gives us access to our um, new, first new weapon, which is the missile. Um, unlike most of the other weapons, the missile does have a limited amount of ammo per stage, and once it's fully depleted, you can't use it for the rest of the stage. <laughs> okay. That's weird is there, that there is still a weapon with limited ammo. <laughs> well, I guess the idea is because like the missiles are like homing, so if you could just yeah. use that like the whole time, that could mean you could just hide in a corner and just let the missiles do the work for you, which I mean, it still does kind of happen later on. It's just, I guess they figured, well, Let's just not let them abuse it that easily. I know the weapons can be pretty important in uh, the other games. I wonder if we could run yeah. out of all of them. That's going to be pretty bad in this one, too. Mm, well, the other weapons don't really have, like... Oh, you don't, you don't really ammo. Right. Yeah, it's just you have to wait for the bar to recharge, so... Um, yeah, there's that aspect, and then, especially on the next stage um you'll see use of the shield which we'll talk about why that makes it important for ground-based sections um right here is a quick fight against the second boss which is a mobile armor card um garish for whatever reason i thought those asteroids there could have been destroyed from our points but it didn't seem like that made a difference so i just went in for the kill for this third stage here, our main mission is to destroy this Arcanova, which is basically a mobile space fortress, which was created by the Federation of a hollowed space, space asteroid. And especially when I noticed this for the first time, it's like they just literally stole this from Gundam because that was really yeah, the, because in that the original Gundam, like Oppo Q is basically the same thing. They just took a hell of space astra and they just made a space fortress out of that. Yeah. Um, um, so then we'll be coming down here past this opening section. But there's this little turret that's going to shoot out these lasers. So 
those lasers will home into your position, but one of the main ideas is that this teacher is trying to teach you is you can just use your the, since the shield doesn't have like a limited usage and can just exist to just you know block incoming enemy fire. You know you can just you know craftily use it to just avoid taking huge amounts of damage. Okay, well, that's good. Did it add, like were they telling you to use the shield though? Like, no, that's how you have to kind of experiment and figure out for yourself. You'd think like, they would, like, with all the cutscene dialogue there's been going on. Yeah, but I think use the, the boost, time. Link. I mean, Fox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the manual does mention it, though, if I recall. Yeah. And the guidebook definitely does. <clears throat> yeah, the napalm seems really ridic ridiculous. Yeah, it just destroys those guys in, like, no time at all, because if you don't have the napalm at this point, what I instead usually would fo recommend focusing on is just getting Vulcan up to level 3 as possible, since um, at level 3, the Vulcan has... Well, the bolts that shoot out there are not only pretty big, but they last a pretty long time after ricocheting off of walls, so it's it's good for crowd control versus, like, the punch or the missile, which the missile is still very limited at this point, and, like, the punch is very situational, like, I think there's only one time I end up, only a couple times I end up using on, like, the final stage, because oh, otherwise it's like... Like, you can upgrade the punch for to, like, three, and that would give you additional, like, power and range, but, like, the problem is, is, like, it's very situational, and you have a lot of enemies that are, like, firing you from a distance, so it just kind of leaves you more vulnerable. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, so right here, we finally get into the entry hatch of the Space Fortress, and... Um, you have a couple of robots here, but you just have these dudes just like firing at you with their machine guns, and they can actually still damage your mech. So, do you have like any auto regen on the health, or what's, what's the, no? Is there, is so, there like health pickups? Yeah, either? there's health. There's health. There's like these H um, okay, health yeah. energy pickups. So then you go over them, gives you like a portion of your energy bar back, just like. 15-20%. Um, these do become a bit more important later on. Um, we get to this little mid-boss here, which... Um, after experimenting a bit, I realized you could just... Either with Vulcan or Napalm, you can just kind of sit here in this corner and just block the energy blasts. It does take a while, though, even with the strategy, because just continually going around in a circle, the same pattern. And then that last one just decides to, like, go somewhere. <laughs> don't think that's ever explained. The other, like, pod of the boss? Yeah, the other pod just, like, disappears. Oh. <laughs> it's never seen again. <laughs> um... Yeah, so over here, you got these little, like, mine guys that you can just learn that way from your position, otherwise they'll just continually home into you. Um, there's a couple of ambushes later on, which is why it's easier sometimes just to go back and forth to kind of lure a couple of them out. Well, besides this, here is just... You need to get that um, power chip so you can get Vulcan up as, as soon as possible. Um, okay. Yeah, one other cool thing I remember reading too, they talk about this in an interview, is I guess um, this stage here was actually planned to be, um, I guess, the fourth stage originally in this sort of X system they were playing out, where you could do like three stages on Earth, or you could do three stages on the moon, come here for this mission, and then finish up the last three stages, either on Earth or the Moon, to give players some sort of, like, branching path options 
to, I guess, increase replayability. But on four, basically, they had to drop the idea because they just like one the the guy, main guy knew like there wasn't enough time to like realistically do all that work with the team they had. I see. So you're just making sure to kill everything in this area? Or what's going on right now? Um, yeah, just killing everything in this area, and then we also have to trigger a, another cutscene over on the right-hand side, because once we get past these guys, there's a couple of like little human enemies to destroy, but the bridge section of this space fortress is right over here, so... Is, is the game usually telling you what to do? Like... Um, it'll give you like a brief overview at the beginning of the stage on like, you know, do so and so for like, or like destroy like the stop the space arc Nova from like falling to Earth for this stage, for example. But outside of that, I mean, it sure. gives it gives the player like a little bit of freedom just to kind of roam around the environment. Just, it seems like it's mostly pretty linear stages, though. Yeah, but if you do pause the game, like there is like a little mini map that pops up, which can help players like figure out where they need to go and okay. it is also useful because then it shows you like potential areas you might want to explore for like additional power chips um etc yeah so i you see i use that right there because i from a previous playthrough i realized if you decide well i i mess up there and just run straight to the missile, but the idea is if you wait for the missile to pass, and you can dash over to the right-hand side, and you have just enough time before the next one gets here. Nice, that way you nice. get some additional power chips. Sweet. And, yeah, I think there's another one over here as well. It is actually important to get a lot of these power chips as soon as possible because, especially later on, there's a point in the game where you're actually locked out of upgrading certain weapons, um, besides two that you have in a cave area, so. And yeah, like you're leveling up like these weapons the whole game, right? So. Yeah. You get, so you kinda you gotta make sure you're getting powered up then, I have to imagine. Yeah, because the Vulcan's already like fully maxed out at this point, so now I'm just upgrading the missile. Okay. And just trying to figure out what to do for here, because there's like one more item box I need to get, which is a health upgrade. The map looks kind of helpful. Yeah, it, it gives you a general overview of what to do. So nice. It's up here. I. Just go back just to destroy these mines. <laughs> Take another hit accidentally. Because there's another um, P. So once we do that, then we can start clearing out this area on the left here. Since pretty soon, yeah, it's going to distribute this like destructive sequence where we just probably want to continually just go out of our way and avoid all these obstacles as fortress starts imploding in of itself. Okay, so this is scripted now, right? Um, not scripted. You still have to move, but like the, oh, the yeah. way that these cutscenes work, like, you get to a certain area in the cutscene will play depending on like, what's going on. Okay. Um, so then this is the stage 3 boss. We're fighting this mobile armor here. It's the Grand Via. Um, this thing normally is extremely beefy and takes a ton of hits, but with any pump, it goes down pretty much like no time at all. Yeah, and, right. But even if you're using normal strats, like probably at a certain point, you want to focus your attention away from the mobile armor and just focus on destroying these, like, um, I guess, like mobile cannons or whatever, energy cannons. Okay. Which are powering the space fortress so that it avoids crashing to Earth. If you don't do this, um, later on, if you beat the game, you do get a bad ending. Oh man, okay. Good to know. There's one other stage in this game where if you don't destroy a certain boss, the same thing also happens. So. 
<sighs> Interesting. Yeah, so now stage four is just a short atmospheric reentry um, mission, which it's kind of like a lot of other mecha shows. Um, and this, basically, the dialogue that's happening here. Um, one of the teams from the Federation that was supposed to be protecting the Ark Nova finally reconvenes on its location and notices you and just starts, you know, going after you with all the support team it has on its side. And, like, they're the um, gray, I guess, like assault suits just will keep respawning, so you can just pick that for power chips until the dialogue ends and you just go on the ship or whatever there. Okay. Um, yeah, as the story bits show here, um, this poor um, 21-year-old guy named Rick is not particularly smart, decides to attempt atmospheric re-entry without like, the use of like a balut to just push the heat away from his assault suit, so... That man, guess, what a madman. Who no, would kidding. do that? It's burning up, man. It's like a burning man. <sighs> so yeah, after you do that, um, just hang out over here and wait for this additional cutscene to end where, um, even though if you landed safely, um, this hostile transport from the Federation is still going to come after you. So your buddies Herman and Kurtz go to intercept that team led by this German guy named Aleph um, Beldark. <laughs> okay. Nice. So Hernan thinks, you know, he's got this, but he doesn't got it. <laughs> Gets eviscerated. I, I can't believe here. it. I can't so believe I, we lost Herman. Yep. Our old buddy Herman. <laughs> so then he goes to collect his teammate, but then you have to fight Beldark and his um, personal assault suit, the Schmertz. But for this fight, like, it's once you realize, like, you really don't have to do anything besides just stay in the corner and then just fire him with either your Vulcan or Napalm, it's nice. pretty easy. Peak gameplay. <laughs> yeah, we're just taking a coffee break. So, yeah, now we've got Mission 5, which is where... I mean, it wasn't too bad before this, but you still... You start... These things just do start getting pretty drastically longer, and... To kind of compensate for that, you do have to pay a bit more attention to how you're dealing with some of these sections. Here you just have this little um, flight section here, which is auto-scrolling. These guys are really hard to take out without any palms. So. Then now we just, you know, trek our way past these little areas here where we have these, like, bombers just dropping bombs on us along with these, like, tiny, like, I guess, assault suit prototypes, we, which we can just kind of, you know, just combust. <laughs> and those guys just, you know, hop straight out and just walk like nothing ever happened. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they, they got things to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gotta start cooking dinner or something. <laughs> they don't, I mean, they don't want to be in no man's land, you know. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? Get out of there. Them. Get to the chopper. <laughs> the animation is just so funny. It's just like they're just strolling so leisurely off the screen. <laughs> yeah, they move as fast as the planes and everything. Yeah, should definitely add that to feedback for the developers. Like, this is not realistic. Humans wouldn't be able to be walk, walk that fast. Yeah, it's like power walking to the max. Damn. 
Yeah, so <laughs> you've got these like little um, salt suit prototypes there, which um, they shoot out. I, I guess it's some sort of energy blast. <laughs> Not sure what else it could be. It's like a glue gun. <laughs> But sometimes, like, because of the way that your trajectory of your shots are, sometimes it just goes right through them. <laughs> and this area here, is, there are multiple paths you can take, so there is a little bit of backtracking that you do want to do to get all the necessary okay. equipment, power chip, etc. Um, of course, they t of tell you here, like, um, you won't be able to get back out of here if you fall into a pit. So if you fall into the pit, over there, it is a game over. Wow. It is. It is something you have to toy with a little bit because um, there are a couple of elusive power chips you can get if you understand like how the flight mechanic works and just how long yeah. it lasts. Over here, I think pretty soon we'll be getting another new weapon here, which is. We actually already got it, but it's the laser, and here it's just generally helpful to get a laser up to level 2 if you can, just because it has... Like, the range you see now, it's it's definitely got some power, but the range is, like, so narrow. It goes up quite a bit at the next level, and even more so level 3. And also it has a lower recharge time with each subsequent level up. That napalm too good. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it just... Yeah, otherwise, if you don't have napalm, it just takes forever just to chew through, like, some of these energy tanks uh, over here. Yeah. There is also a dash mechanic in this game as well. Um, there's some situations where it is a bit helpful, but the only problem is, is that you do have a delay between when after the dash ends and then when you can jump. So sometimes it's not always advisable to just like dash all over the place. Okay. Yeah, and this is the first of the um, power chips they have to go out of her way of. So you have to get these? You don't have to, but it makes it like a bit easier to get to like level three laser right around when you start the final stage, which is where oh. it's comes a bit more useful. Okay. It reminds me of uh, the bottom of Cloud City from Star Wars. Like the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know the the cloud layers in this game. Pretty awesome. Um, even if like the developers, of course, complain about like, well, other developers are using the full like color palette like the Super Famicom we were frustrated we couldn't but I, don't know, I think they pulled off a pretty good job here yeah and well then something probably well worth bringing up uh I, you probably know it's like the game had like a lot of issues like crashing and stuff have you heard about this I don't think I have now <laughs> oh okay yeah like apparently uh just like a thing with this with the original version of the game, it's like it was rushed out, so it just crashes like all the time. Oh my god. Um, yeah, uh, and a, well, then apparently, well, this did happen. A guy was running it at a game zone quick, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and it just no. kept crashing on him. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like, I'm surprised you don't know because um, it's like one of those things where like they kind of did. I think they it did more stuff in the game that wasn't even like approved. So they, I don't know. Okay. So it's just, okay. like, it was just huh. like it just it was rushed out. Interesting. But I'm I'm guessing like that's completely fixed in the uh, M2 port and whatnot. Yeah, I never encountered that issue personally. Um, Apparently, yeah, that's so a thing. Interesting. Um, right now we have this like mid boss here, which is a. Um, I guess heavy mobile weapon called the Swai. Um, I think it's called um, Baynig. Metal Gear. 
Uh, close enough, but <laughs> they explain in the guidebook that basically it's like this. Um, it's extremely like an overpowered, like, I guess, like mobile tank, which has a reported 60 times more powerful firepower than the Falcon. But the problem is um, with the way that I guess warfare changed in this war and with the mass deployment of the Vulcan, it really wasn't beneficial to just keep reducing those. So, well, especially when you have the napalm around. Yeah, with the napalm. I mean, nothing stands in its way. Like, come on now. <laughs> yeah, they should have focused on the napalm. If only they knew. So I think here, let's see, that should be the last of the power chips that we need to go out of the way to grab for the stage. Really just the last part of this is just um, powering away for these enemies. Um, one other thing they also do talk about is um, the designer mentioned he wanted to, I guess, kind of add to the destructive immersion in the environment by allowing pretty much like the first 16 by 8 like pixels on top of like floors and stuff like that to be destructible with your own main shot so that you can leave indents with your own main weapon um that's pretty he good al he also regrets that um because of the little limited memory space he couldn't have made the destructible like area any bigger than it was in the final release So now we've got the fifth boss here, which is um, called the Deccan. It is a space shuttle from the Federation, and the idea here is this is the uh, boss where if you don't destroy it before it leaves the atmosphere or within the allotted time frame, you also get the bad ending because it goes after your Pacific Union resource ships up in space. So on the left-hand side, you might notice that it gives you a little bit of indicator about like um, the altitude at which you know you're currently at. Pretty much just telling you like you know you need to hurry up and like destroy this. <laughs> um, generally, here I use the laser because it's generally better for crowd control on this. But like sometimes in this battle, just stuff just doesn't go as intended. So, like, for example, I was taking way too many hits from those enemies there, and as a result, I ended up switching to Napalm just to ensure that I would destroy it in time. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. For Herman's sake, damn it. So now we're going into stage six here, which is this. Basically, the Union has created this like um, soldier soul plan to strike back at the Federation to get to their capital. And the quickest way to get there, apparently, is to trek for this mount trek for this mountainous range here. But that's not to what say the hell snork. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know why they picked that name, but it's like just it's so dorky for the way these things look and the way they behave. Um, oh my God. Ger but I generally hang out on the right here because um, like it's just easier to just, you know, kill them right up front. And if you try to do it from the left, those mines are just way too unpredictable to the point where you end up just taking way more damage than you really wanted to. Um, once you get out of the section, though, there are some <laughs> little robos there just hiding out in the snow. And sometimes, because of the way that they work, um, they might move back behind like some of those like, green canopy areas there, make it easy for you to get hit. Um, and then we get into this cave section here where um, I was a bit surprised when I first got to the section, but for whatever reason, you just can't use the laser weapon here at all. So you're just stuck to Vulcans and missile for some reason. 
Yeah, oh. you know what they say. You know what they say. Never shoot a laser in a cave. <laughs> That's what they say. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard that one before, but I'll go with that. Um, that mid boss there, the serpent. I get the feeling it maybe like I like the first time you do that fight. If it, it feels like they want you to like drop down and attack it, but. You just do, it just takes forever doing it that way. So, generally, like this, there's two safe ways you could do that fight, which is either you just never drop down and then you just attack it from above, or after the first, when the serpent comes down, does the first pass, you could actually go to the left. Like, there's like a little underhang or whatever from below, like the platform you just dropped off of, and then you can just kind of hang out in the back of there and then shoot the boss as it appears. Yeah. Um, this section here is a kind of a bit annoying because you have all these like little like small dudes just like littered throughout this like cave section here with limited visibility and especially when you shoot them with like Vulcan they'll just continually move around like just in a defensive maneuver so I can just take forever to kill them and then they also have these mines that are just littered around. Pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, really, a couple of these sections here are just not really so exciting in terms of gameplay, but it's more like the world building, I think, is pretty sweet. Like, it just, I guess, adds overall to the immersion of this game. Now, I don't think we mentioned the soundtrack either, but I mean, that stage one theme is so good. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's definitely sounding pretty nice. Like, this is, I mean, adequately intense action y music here, but. Yeah, it's from a composer named Masano um, Akahori. Worked on some other Messiah stuff, I remember, right? Yeah, he worked on. He also worked on Brain Lord and Nosferatu. The soundtracks for those. Um, I don't think he's really done too much outside of that in recent years. Like he worked on some Harry Potter game and then worked on a couple of like these like DS training games. And that's about it. Oh man, <laughs> the legacy. Yeah. <laughs> It's right here at this little train section here where would you get crushed if you didn't do that uh you just take damage but because okay. i don't think anything really auto deaths you with crush it's just you take a pretty significant chunk of damage from that section and then once we go that's another winding corridor of just miscellaneous mines all over the place and there's a couple of overhangs where if you're not really careful with the way you're dropping them down it's pretty easy to take a big chunk of damage man yeah the fact that you can shoot all the terrain is kind of crazy yeah <laughs> they did a really good job on that because the bullet clips you know just littering around the place it's not a lot of games I can think of, especially Mecha Relay, they're doing that this time. Yeah, that's definitely like a nice detail. Jared can get a little confusing, but yeah, just, just drop down right here and then Yeah, just had to pause there for a second, so you can actually just skip ahead like 30 oh, seconds. Oh, really? Yeah, I sorry, I didn't realize that. So skip ahead to 
50? 37.50, yeah. All right. All right yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll resume us from there. Okay. All right, Alec, here's the countdown. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Yep, so I just had to pause there just to take care of something, but... Um, Long game. Now I come up to the sixth boss battle here, it's just, we've got these, like, anti-aircraft guns that need to be destroyed, and then while we're destroying those, um, there's another um, mobile armor that we got to take care of, and this guy's called the Schneebrich, or whatever it's called. Um, this He's not really too bad, but... Is it the, or is it the orange ship? Yeah, that's the orange ship. But he has this, like, um, energy attack they can do where he just, like, charges at you, kind of like a... Um, and usually what I try to do is lure him to the side of the screen so that when he does the charge up attack or whatever, um, you have enough room to like dodge at the end, so. Huh. Other than that, he'll just throw these like energy balls at you, but. Ooh, got him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you destroy all those radars and scanners, and that way you take care of any sort of weaponry that could harm your main force. Um, now we get to this stage. So this is the stage I feel like um, unintentionally there is like a pretty big difficulty jump. We're invading the Federation's capital city, but even from like the get-go, um, there's a couple of things that we have to do to get started from because we do have enemies that spawn from behind. And for whatever reason, like these soldiers here don't do like a ton of damage and take off like a good 6% of, like your health bar with each hit. <laughs> really? These little guys? Yeah. Man. So I basically just kind of improv a strategy I saw for another video where um well the shield is uh, man it's so good it just blocks everything pretty much I yeah I guess that was maybe their way of just like counterbalancing like the amount of shield uses you might have to do but like the problem is like this huge stage segment right here you just don't get um Oh yeah, and then sometimes like even the napalm, the laser just won't hit the um, enemy. So then what you have to do is you lure the enemy up close, and then you just punch him. <laughs> wow. So <laughs> it does get a little tedious sometimes trying to weed these guys out. Man. See so, yeah, how even that one hit there it took off like a pretty sizable chunk of the health bar. Yeah. It wouldn't be so bad if they just had like maybe one health drop like in the middle of the next segment, but you don't get any health drops until you make it to the boss, which is like... It's like, way further ahead than this. <laughs> gotta love that flame behind town effect going on. Like Rondo of Blood. Yeah, here we get the last power point for the laser. It's quite chunky at this point. Yeah, sweet background. Yeah, <laughs> so good. Taking out the little guys, man. Yeah, it's just... It makes you feel bad for them when, when they go into like a little pixel form. Yeah, and they have like these like little muffled screens or whatever sometimes too. 
<laughs> it's like, you bastard. Brutal stuff. <laughs> if you didn't have to napalm for this section, though, um, I mean, you can still use laser pretty effectively to clear some things out. And I think some players, what they opt to do instead is, um, like some of those bigger guys, you can just like kind of do a running start and then just like hover over them and then hit them with the laser. But... And they should be able to use napalm on you, see how it feels. Yeah. You know, it's unfair. <laughs> well, hey, it's one of those things like, you know, life isn't fair. <laughs> it's like it. Yeah, the explosion reminds me of like those like bombs from Garega that kind of like yeah. uh, explode out. Yeah, they have like the smaller spray sprites that like explode out. To remember, it's like you got like arm bomb going on. <laughs> oh yeah, and then here this tank just—I don't know it. Sometimes like it, I was like not expecting to like <laughs> jump that high or whatever, but it's like what the hell? <sighs> this should not be happening. Blitz Cafe, maybe. I think that's an F, so it's like Flitz Cafe. It could be a B still. <laughs> Maybe a little tone in the nose. That's where all the NFL Blitz cabs are. <laughs> True. Man, so, you, so you've just been I, inching forward just the whole time. Just, that's the safe way, huh? It is, because um, then this next section here, so there's a couple of ambushes from behind, so I have to like advance the screen in a particular way to get the spawn to... Yeah, so there's the first one. And this guy is just being a dick and like just hanging behind me like... <laughs> it's like, bro, can you just move forward? Yeah. Yeah, so there I was just improperly just kind of studying, like, the way he was, I guess, firing and just trying to get him to move based on that. Then you have another one that pops out immediately from behind. So are you, are you fighting him like this because it's easier to do to kill him this way then, or...? It's easier and also you have those guys that pop on the right, so basically um, in this game, you do not want to be flanked by both directions because it basically means, like, Especially, you know, you're stuck in that like little like gate here or whatever it is. Um, you're probably going to be taking quite a bit of damage yeah. because you just don't have enough room to maneuver. Oh, okay. Because that's intended to be like an ambush right there. And if I didn't do it like that, it's like I'd be taking a good like 20% of damage there just from shots or whatever, if not more. Like, I had a couple of runs before this where it's just constantly getting here, like, below half health, and I was like, how are we supposed to get past the boss of this? Dang, okay. Yeah, yeah. That is kind of cheap. There, a... Yeah, so as you can see there, I kind of get flanked by that guy, and just trying to wait for the right time. So let me learn back out that way. Serious business. Yes, yeah, so then take him care of them. Take care of him that way. But yeah, it's like in G4, this section is the only safe way I've managed to do it like that because it's like a good six, seven enemies there. And... Yeah, I can see that. Like if there. That's one of the things where I think um, they've talked about this in interviews, but I get the feeling that like some people that were involved in this game probably felt like it wasn't. It could have been better balanced in some ways, and like when the same team worked on Gun Hazard, like one of the main things they did in that game was allowing for some sort of like um, 
item inventory slash like HP consumables that like if you get in a sticky situation like that you can at least kind of recover your health. Oh. And just for reference, um, when I'm talking about Gun Hazard, that's referring to um, From Mission Gun Hazard, which was a 1996 um, action like mecha platformer game made by Square, which had many of the same team members that worked on this game. Okay, sweet, sweet. Gun Hazard. Yep. So over here, we also want to because like that guy fires super early. Just with, there's like a, the way the shots are arced is like a little weird. I take another hit there. It's like, yeah. <laughs> but once we get past this area, um, this is like the main parliamentary building for the Federation capital headquarters. So once we get past this guy, we can just head straight in. That will bring us to a, another boss fight. First of a couple, actually. <laughs> so just straight up crash in. <laughs> so that's the president, um, Chanel Dark. Um, all the parliamentary members scram, but then you're finding the Belmark guy you fought in mission four, and he has another mech this time, which is called um, the Zoifrem. It's a prototype assault suit which has better specs than the Vulcan. It's got these like little um, bits on the side that can like fire at you. Um, the opening of the fight is honestly a bit weird because you're supposed to, I guess, be just maneuvering like, freely in air like I am right now, but it doesn't kick in until like a few seconds after. So. For whatever reason, it's like that stupid dash he does at the beginning always like gets you and takes off a pretty decent chunk of your health bar. <laughs> okay, I see. Weird. But other than that, it's like you can use the missiles. Um, you can all and then you switch an napalm for a quick kill. You could also laser the bits it shoots out later on. I learned for additional health items. So you're confronting the president here for his crimes, and he just straight up off himself instead of answering. Um, oh, this is the scene that was censored for the U.S. release and just basically completely taken out. <laughs> wow. For segment error, that is. Wow. Um, now we're in this little section here where... Um, you have all these hatches closing, you have these guys on like what looks like Zambonis or like little hovercraft trucks. Um, mainly what is important here is you do want to get like a health pickup as soon as you can. I'm, And then over in this section here, you could try to hop between the platforms or it's just easier just to do that running jump like right there just to clear everything. Nice, um, nice. We get a second health drop here, which is pretty good because now I've got this second fight against the Rick's um, Volcarno, which is rave. kind of like this prototype assault suit, which fires this like annoyingly long laser beam at you, but you can exploit the fact that um, because it travels at like a 45 degree angle, it's pretty much misses you if you're like right underneath it. Man, he must be pissed. <laughs> now he's dead. Well, yeah, but we also helped him out before, so it's like... You picked the fight with the wrong guy. <laughs> and then, now we get into our final confrontation here against Beldark, who has um, gone into the Federation's ultimate weapon, which is called the um, Build Borg. Um, Looks like a frog. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Something. Um, a, a very uh, armored frog. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Um, we start from the bottom first because there's multiple parts of this to destroy. Um, I screwed up there and accidentally destroyed the arm part first, so I didn't get the health drop I needed, but oh, that's okay. Because right up here, um, before it transitions to the final phase, there's a additional art piece near the top that we need to destroy, which 
kind of shoots out these like semi homing shots. That laser, though. Yeah, the laser's super good. Um, and then for this part here, I've done this fight before both ways, but um, yeah, I accidentally screwed up here, but you want to basically misdirect the laser he shoots from his mouth downwards so that you can get some free shots straight up in his cockpit. Nice. Nice. So, you blew up yeah. my head, why? <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> It's a little funny the um, comparing the translation here versus the fan translation that came out some years back for this game, where they just added more like explicitives of like him just like cursing like his end. Really? Yeah. From what, from what I understand, this is supposed to be like more official. So yeah, um, are barely um, working. Back manages to touch down. We get out of it as it crumbles to nothing and blows itself up. Let's go, stick people team. So, yeah, our pilot, um, Jake Brain, has met up with the ship. The ship's navigator, um, Claire Coral, it's basically the good ending because if you, for example, failed to destroy the Ark Nova or didn't stop the space shuttle to come on. From what's implied in the bad ending, your main ship takes like heavy losses and you're just like super bitter about it. And the game will just tell you like to basically try again. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> GG. So yeah, that was the clear. <laughs> Yeah, crazy. I didn't even realize it was the final boss until until it was dead. Yeah, but I think it's just more just like the fact that it's just kind of an endurance test of like those three fights back to back with like a couple some health items in between, which don't fully oh, replenish your yeah. energy stocks. And also just having Napalm does help, you know, get through those fights quite a bit more versus just laser on its own. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. though I've done like those fights with just laser. Really? Okay. Yeah, it, it's just it, it just takes longer, like especially like that last boss fight there, um, because it takes like three to four cycles at least to like blow off the head of laser. It's like you just have to be more cognizant of like the arm punching you or like the Vulcan that pops out along with all the laser and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. But yeah. Yeah, good stuff. That's pretty much it. Um, this is just the credits scroll for like the last three minutes. Okay, sweet. Um, the range album's not nearly as good as the original soundtrack. Um, I mean, it's a matter of preference, honestly. Like, there's some tracks I think from the original. Well, because the range. Um, soundtrack is basically the original masters before they were converted to the Super Nintendo sound format. So there's some aspects that are basically minorly tweaked for like the actual game release that you know some people might feel preferable. But I mean, yeah. interesting. Yeah, cool stuff. Uh, yeah, it looks like a great uh, entry in the series, and yeah, it looks. Pretty fun, uh, yeah. utilizing that inch forward gameplay for a lot of that <laughs> near the end, though. I don't know. Yeah, that's one of the things they kind of wish they maybe, you know, reworked a little bit. But like, but, it, w it wasn't like, I mean, was Leno still the first game in the series then, or? Yeah, Leno's is considered the first in the series. Yeah, okay. Like, for I understand, they were like, mostly self-contained within each entry. Gotcha, yeah. Um, what do you think? Besides this, um, do we want to show off the upgrade in the Napalm Launcher or the interview? Sure. Uh, sure, yeah, whatever. Uh, let's just start off with the Napalm gun upgrade first, because I think the guy actually talks about it in his video.
So, uh, is this the interview video? Or, or, or the napalm video? Napalm gun upgrade video? Today I'm gonna be showing you a oh, quick shit. tutorial. Oh shit, napalm gun upgrade on... video? What? Yep. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Yep, same. All right, three, two, one. Today I'm gonna be showing you a quick tutorial on one of my favorite games for Super Nintendo, which is called Cybernator by Konami, which is actually a salt suit Vulcan. So um, this video is how to get and upgrade the napalm Japan. launcher. I think there was actually one for the PS4. Oh, this video is so how to I'm get upgrade the napalm launcher. Is okay. Something that I don't think there's Correct. another video out there on. So there's two aspects to yeah. showing you how the to napalm do this. launcher and then upgrade the secret so. weapon in the game called okay. the napalm launcher. It's really strong. Anyone who speed runs this game knows about it, knows how to get it. I'll show you how to get it. But there's a, a super secret basically in the game where you can actually upgrade the napalm launcher. And, yeah, I uh, thought we'll this would be important to show off because further um, on in the video, but I don't think you've really documented you it anywhere. It's like a pretty tough how challenge. to upgrade the napalm launcher. Uh, like people had theories it. about it and stuff so like that. But... Oh, really? Okay. Like, people knew how to get the base one, but really hadn't worked out the whole upgrading option from what I had seen right, so to get the before I stumbled on this video. Just the base okay. version. On the first stage, you can't shoot your weapon at any And you, are, you already did go over this, this, but stage. yeah. So you basically just have to yeah. rush through the entire stage. It doesn't matter if you get so hit. Don't, don't you can shoot take damage, that's one. fine. But you cannot shoot your weapon at anything but the boss. If you do that, yeah. anybody can do this. It's pretty easy. Uh, doesn't take much practice at all. You just zoom all the way to the end <laughs> and then kill the boss and boom, you'll have the napalm launcher. It's the next step after that where it gets challenging. Yeah, this won't take too long. Right, that so we're sweet, boss. sweet movement. Yeah, it's smooth. You can do this any number of ways. You don't have to use the Vulcan cannon here. You have two weapons. The other one is a fist weapon. You can use that if you want. But you have to only be hitting the boss if you can. I think you can hit those two gun turrets, but um, I, I don't risk it. I just like to shoot yes. directly at the Yes, so boss. for clarification there, if you do actually destroy the gun turrets, that actually so locks you out of the napalm. Okay. <laughs> so you easy. can only shoot the main unit. And we go to the next stage. <laughs> so here's where it gets challenging. So there's not much information on how to get the napalm launcher upgrade. Getting it is easy, but getting the upgrade is what's hard. There's a lot of misinformation about there. There's a few articles on cheat websites about how to get it, but the criteria is usually pretty vague and not laid out. Basically, you have to repeat what you did in the first stage. So you cannot shoot your weapon at anything except the final boss. But there's another piece to this. You cannot collide with any objects. What does that mean? Asteroids. So there are asteroids all throughout this run and gun really? stage here. Yeah. You cannot hit it's any of them. Alright, so here we like... are. We're starting the stage. Just past our first group of asteroids. You can see I have the napalm launcher here. You see the little dash next to its energy bar? That means right now it can't be upgraded. That's its final form. All right, so you're dodging a few things. You're gonna take a missile occasionally. You're gonna get hit. There's a second group of meteors. You've gotta avoid them. Yeah, it's just <laughs> dodging meteors. It just gets pretty silly. Especially because that also applies Here's to the, hard the part, right actual there. boss Boom. itself. Did you see that? You have to zoom <laughs> through that so of asteroids, <laughs> and it's pretty tough. It's really easy. I to swear to God, it's made the dev team probably thought it was a good joke. Me like, let's see them try to like figure this one out. <laughs> so I know this is pretty so quick. Random. I apologize for that. You might need to back up if you want to see it again. All right, so yeah. now we're in yeah, a free floating stage where we're trying to make Yeah, so far. I, but he's making safe states because I don't think take the it's pretty hard to do this in one go from But you see those turrets that are shooting you? Those are also asteroids. So you can't, you cannot collide with any of those at all. 
Yeah, the turrets count have to restart as well. The whole game. You're not going to get it. And for that reason, we're going to be using save states. All right, so I made it past all those obstacles. We're at the final boss of the level, which is basically like a battle cruiser. What were they thinking? <laughs> yeah, honestly. Now, that's the tricky part. Night. When he comes out, he shoots his own ring, ring of meteors. You see that? Now, I collide More with yeah. a couple of them. Yeah, so, so I reloaded the game. They're basically like, I invalidated the it's whole like thing. It's like a wall of like asteroid like turrets. That's, that's so dumb. <sighs> no kidding. Just like, shoot at him. Be careful who, not who to would hit want, any of Who the would asteroids. try to dodge Do those? Not hit them. Shoot directly at the boss, and boom. No one. If you're using the napalm launcher, it's easy. You'll hit no him in a few hits. No one. Just don't get hit by any of those asteroids. Except that Nestor. That is the key. That's the only <laughs> criteria. That and don't shoot your weapon except at him. <laughs> okay. So... Now, yeah, you, now you have it. If you're playing the game normally, yeah, you'll see you on the next know stage. if you succeed it until you get to the stage. It must be like super big. So it's Nathan. kind of annoying. You basically have one shot to get it. If you don't get it, you have to reset the whole game. And boom, there we go. Now yes. you can see that the napalm launcher is Whoa. upgradable. It has the little number there. Those are basically the ticks that you require power-ups in order to get to the next level. All the weapons have three levels. Napalm Launcher gets significantly more powerful, and the fireballs bounce off of walls when you get to a higher level. <laughs> See, there we go. I just picked up a power up. Wow. It ticked down. Yeah. I got another so, one. There you go. <laughs> and that's how you level up the weapons in the game. But yeah, if you don't complete that challenge on level two, if you hit any asteroids, or if you shoot. The friggin' asteroids. All right, well, uh, good yeah. st interesting stuff there. Yep, and then last but last not least, there's an interview I have from the declassified port from one of the main designers, Toshi Nakai. If you want to watch that, it's, it's like a 12 sure. minute interview. All right, sure. Okay. All right, I'll count us in. Three, two, one, go. Okay, let me fix the cropping here. Yeah, me too. Whoops. Mm. It's still looking a bit cropped on stream. Let's see. It's like mostly the left side. Uh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it there. Uh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is from the Switch version. Okay, well, uh, maybe we should reset the video, I guess. I don't know, like, oh, yeah. a lot of yeah. the subtitles were cut off there. Yeah, that's fine. I'm at zero. Alright, three, two... One go. Right. So that's, that's the guy. Uh, sure. One second. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll of course have it in the description and whatnot. その以前からパソコンを使ってたので、アナログの手作業で直線を引いたりするような仕事柄にまあこう勝分上合わなかったという。そうなんでその後。So he's like the he's the one of the main he's the main artist. 
ウェイターをやりつつも漫画などを書いていてですね。あ漫画のアシスタントにも応募して、yeah, so、いや、そうですね。そうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそう私は NCS には入社してないんですね。初期はフリーランスというかアルバイトのような形だったと思います。曖昧ですけれども。その後、今、現在、現存するある会社の立ち上げに関わり、社員として NCS に派遣されてました。また、その後、フリーに戻るという形で、まあ、いろいろな状況がありフリーに戻らざるを得なくなったということがあります。NCS との関わりは初めて入ったパソコンゲーム会社からのまあ人脈でしたね。コンシューマーをやる前にパソコンゲーム1、2本ほどやりました。さらに言えばその会社あの表参道の会社から NCS というのはまたこれまた非常に近かったということがあります。バルケンのスタートのことに関しては明確には覚えていませんが、メインプログラマーの方がレイノス的な動きのプロトタイプを作ってたんですね。それを見て私が腕の方向をもっと増やしたいアニメーションパターンを増やしたらどうかとか砲台を破壊したいですねなどというふうな意見を交わしてたと思いますそして私が床を全部破壊しましょうというふうに確か言ったと思うんですが最初はそれはどうなと言われたような記憶がありますそれは何を言うのかというと、SF 戦争アクションなので、yeah. <笑>リアル系のロボットになりますよねそういう方向で進みます。スペシャルデストラクトブルフロー。ボトムズよりも大きく歩く戦車というイメージですね。デザインの方の進行は、お送りした私のデザインを見てもらい、進んでいったと思います。当時はあの会議を開いてデザインを検討するようなことはなかったので、デザイナーに一任されてたんじゃないかなと思います。So what script is like, I don't think it's that much different from the original, just I remember there's looking at some video of like the fan translation from the super fan con version. They took some liberties with additional explicitives.、Um, for the Super Nintendo release,、um, they took out that one scene where like the president、um, kind of shoots himself with the gun and then Took out the character portraits for some reason. <laughs> I don't think there's too much differences. で実際にあの港で動いている普段見かけない作業車両を間近に見て強く影響を受けたことはもう間違いないと思います。尊敬するデザイナーさんは<笑>外国の方ですとシドミードさんですね。彼は厳密にメタデザイナーではありませんが私と同世代の方であれば彼のデザインした。作品にまあ尋常ならざる影響を受けたのではないでしょうか。私は映画のデザイン、映画用のデザインやイラストの数々にまあ相当な影響を受けました。えー、もう一方は日本の SF やファンタジーのイラストで有名な加藤直之さんです。Mm-hmm. 影響を受けたというより、加藤さん I don't think so because this port came out like Earlier this year, like late March. I think Sid Mead is. He died like 2019 or something like that. いくら紙の上で細かいディティールを描いてもキャラクターの縦が100ピクセルで見えるので、ですので、大きな雰囲気が見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で画面上に見える程度で
デザインだけだとかっこよく見えてもゲームの時期となると細いと弱そうだし太すぎると重そうに見えてしまいますそこを気をつけてたんではないかなと Just the right amount of thickness. There's that frog mech. Looks like a frog. I'm a model. 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 3D の方が面白いでしょうね。Oh, man. 2D wasn't good enough to really show off the max. We'll be back. We'll be back. Oops, I didn't、uh, have that、uh, unmuted on Discord. I was just saying,、uh, 2D is not good enough for this guy. We'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> Well, I hope so. Because I remember、um, this game did get a sort of like pseudo remake on like PS2, but I don't remember that be being received well at all. Interesting. Okay, yeah. I forget if it was like they made some like gameplay alterations that people didn't like, or it was just the really, really kind of like. Not good remake soundtrack. But I think it was done by X Knots, who were like, those were like, that was like the former Psycho、um, X employees. Yeah.、Hmm. Have either of you seen Votoms? No.、Um, I've seen pretty much most of the series, yeah. Great show, great show. Nice. It's considered a classic in a lot of、um, enthusiasts like old mecha circles. so... Oh, nice. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I played the、uh, Steam one. I, it's, not, it's fine. I think it's fine. I still need to try that.、Um, yeah, it's, it's actually pretty cool. For sure. There's some like RPG town music playing in the background of this video and <laughs> bothering me. Yeah. It must be from. Just, I don't know, one of. Yeah, one of.、Um... Oh, I think that's from the ending credits from the game. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so this is talking about the、um, multiple branching paths system I mentioned earlier.、Oh, wow, okay. Trying to pull a wolf fang on us? <laughs> wolf fang did it already. Step off. Step off. <laughs> Who let this man cook? <laughs> What is this graph like? Yeah, it's a weird way to represent it, but basically, I think the idea is there's two potential starting points. You have that central stage, and then you can choose one of the two other paths、right. for the second half of the game. Dude, he's talking about how he's been allowed outside and was like hot outside. Yeah. <laughs> Working topless. <laughs> Is this like Gun Frontier all over again? 
My favorite thing was the floor. <laughs> yep. Puppy Break quiet. Floor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that had to have been, a, yeah, annoying to, to program and stuff. Yeah. Pup, no. <laughs> Pup, we're talking about um, shooting a floor. <laughs> Dog's getting antsy. This is almost done, I think, so. <laughs> He's like, well, you know, the, the, the shooting the floor and stuff, that was the hardest part of it for us to make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that or just like, I know you like talking about floors, but where's the food on my floor? <laughs> the food? Well, just if he needs dinner. <laughs> I True, don't know. True. It is, you know, there's a whole art image gallery in this port that's has a pretty sizable amount of those concept art drawings that are shown in this interview, too. So that's a, another reason why he it's worth getting this. Dude, he's talking about trying to get the napalm. What the shit? <laughs> he finally remembers how difficult it was to get the napalm. <laughs> Oh crap, I had the disc reader. He's, it says he finally remembered how difficult it was to get the napalm. Yep. <laughs> oh god. Alright, it's all his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, game's cool for sure. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, that last line is so good. <laughs> It's very true. Like you have to be a certain sort of like dedicated weirdo to like, you know, really get into this stuff. But it's like not in a bad way. Like it's in a kind of joking, like good way, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the biggest obsessions out there. It's like the mecha obsession. I mean, not really weird. It was commonplace. Oh, yeah. shut up. Yeah, especially at that time where, um, especially like after Gundam became popular, there's like a lot of history behind like not just other series, but like people making their own like small companies to produce like garage kits, which is basically them like, you know, working with like plastic resin to create like custom models and do like basically either mail order or like, you know, you just pick it up at the shop. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we can about wrap this up then. Yeah. Good stuff. Um I yeah, I definitely need to play through it and uh Yeah, you know, it's a great series and uh yeah, they do really just love the mech the mech stuff. You could tell when you play the when you play the games in the series. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks for watching everybody and yeah, till next time. Yep, see you next game.